Okay, today we're looking at 2.3, the product rule. If we have, for example, two functions, let's say f at x and g of x, and we know that these two functions are differentiable. That means that each of these functions individually we can take the derivatives of. Well, because of this, we can apply something called the product rule. That means that if I take the product of the two functions, f and g, and I take the derivative of the product of those two functions, you can find the derivative using something called the product rule, so that you wouldn't have to expand it. To find the product, you would take the derivative of the first times the second, plus the derivative of the second times the first. It's almost, if you could imagine, like you're doing um, like distribution. You take the derivative of one, multiply it by the other, and then you take the derivative of the other and multiply it by the first one. So it just seems a little interesting when you want to find the derivative. Now, this way is really hard to remember. I find that students have a hard time remembering this entire formula right here and be able to figure it out. So how I teach students is I tell them to remember it this way, f prime g plus g prime f. Now, some students will look at f prime g and g prime f and say, hmm, could I do it another way? And you can. Some have, have taught, have understood it as f prime g plus g, f g prime. So basically, ultimately, all you're trying to do is you find the derivative of one, multiply it by the other function, then the derivative of the other function, multiplied by the first function. It's understood that you don't remember a formula, but you remember the method. This way, this is retained longer in your understanding of how to take derivatives. So let's look at an example. Example one, given f at x equals x times x squared plus 3x, you're asked to determine f prime of x. How do we do that? Well, yesterday, or the day before, in 2.2, .2, you would have been had to expand it and then find the derivative. We're going to use the product rule today so that you get forced into using a different method so that you have many tools in your toolbox to be able to apply derivatives. This first one, we need to look at which one is f and which one is g. So we need to know which is the first function. So our first function is the first part of the product. The second function is this piece right here, and that's the second part of our product. And we're looking at the product of both of these. So to find the derivative, you then take the derivative of the first, which is 1. So derivative of x is 1 and then multiplied by the second function. And we add the first function times the derivative of the second part. So one more time. Let's look at that that was there. So we have this one more time. So derivative of the first times the second and the derivative and then the first times the second derivative. That's one way to be able to approach this question. Let's look at it another way. Let's say we took the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. Would either of our two answers have changed our final answer? And the answer to that is no. Whether you do f prime g plus g prime f, or f prime g plus f g prime, you will get the same result. And the goal is, is to take the derivative properly so that you get the same result. 
we need the same result here. So expand it and collect like terms and lo and behold folks you get 3x squared plus 6x. So how did we expand it? Remember how you did this? 1 times all of this stayed the way it was and then 2x plus 3 times the x stayed all of this and then you collected those like terms. Let's look at the way we did it yesterday. Yesterday you would have taken f at x and expanded it. How you would have expanded it? You would have said f at x is equal to x cubed plus 3x squared. Once you did that, you would have had to find the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared, plus 6x, the derivative of the second. And look, your answers for here and here are both the same. Okay? So, whether we use the product rule or we expand to find our answer, you will get the same result. And the goal is, is to be able to use multiple types of derivatives to get the right answer. Okay, let's look at the next one. Example number two. Given that y equals x plus 2 times 3x squared plus 5x minus 1, you're asked to determine the derivative. Determine y prime. What is the value of y prime? y prime is, now we have to look at the original question, here it is. This is going to be our f folks, our first one, and this piece is going to be our second one. So we need to find the derivative of the first times the second, and then the derivative of the second times the first. So we're looking at it this way. y prime is equal to the derivative of the first times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second. And expand it, collect like terms, and the result you will get is 9x squared plus 22x plus 9. That is the result from this question. Let's go on to the last, the, another example. <clears throat> example number three. Given f at x is equal to root x times x minus 6x cubed, you're asked to find f prime at x. How are we going to do that? Well, folks, you need to convert first this function into exponential form. So this radical needs to be converted to exponential form. And we do that. So f at x is equal to x to the half times x minus 6x cubed. You need to find the derivative. To find the derivative, it will be, now be careful. We're going to do this really slowly. So the goal is, is to get x to the half, find this derivative first. This derivative will turn into 1 half x to the negative half. That is the derivative of this piece right here. Times the second function plus the first function times the second derivative. Once we do that, we can now expand this. So we're going to expand it by writing 1 half x to the half. Where did that come from? Well, we took the 1 half times x to the negative 1 half times x. So with these exponents, you're going to add them. Negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half. Then minus 6 over 2. Okay, now let's look back. It was 6 over 2. We changed the 6 over 2. Automatically, you should recognize that 6 over 2 becomes 3. Then we have x to the 2 and a half. Where did that come from? Well, it was negative a half plus 3, which becomes 2 and a half. Now, you can never, never have a mixed fraction. So automatically, you should convert that 2 and a half to 
5 over 2. Let's keep going. x plus x to the half minus 18 x to the 2 and a half, which is 5 over 2. All right. Knowing this, we can now collect like terms. So f prime of x is equal to 3 over 2. That would be a half, this function, and this function can be added together. Those are our like terms. So 3 over 2, x to the half, minus 21, x to the 5 halves. Now this answer here is great if it's exponential. So this is left in exponential form. If you had to give me the answer with no rational exponents, you would have to convert it to radical form. So you would have 3 over 2, 3 root x over 2 minus 21 root x to the 5. And so this answer is in radical form i.e. there are no rational exponents as a final answer. All right. Since we're running out of time, uh, we're going to stop this video now and you'll be able to go on to video number two. See you in the next video.